What's up, Cups? Pisces here, aka Coach, and welcome back to another Fundamentals of Dead by Daylight video. This is episode 2, and in this episode we're going to be working on distance and pathing. Dead by Daylight is a game of time management and distance. Distance is the most valuable resource in the game at all times for Survivor. In Dead by Daylight, the Survivor is 10-15% to 15 slower than the killer. Therefore, when it comes to chases, you will need to eventually find a way to give yourself more distance to get away from the killer, because they will slowly and slowly catch up to you. And the amount of distance you have from the killer is, is equal to the amount of time you're safe from the killer getting a hit on you. So in most basic situations where killer only has their basic attack, uh, when it comes to running from the killer, the further you are away, obviously the longer it will take him to get to you. So this gives you more options on where you're able to go in your chase. So right now you can see he's very far away from me. I passed a lot of windows and pallets. So at any point during this chase, I could have picked all those windows and pallets. And we basically ran a straight line across the entire map just from starting off where you saw him start earlier. In this situation, the killer starts only a couple meters closer when he swings. And notice just how much faster he catches up to me from when we started the chase off. And now, uh, the last chase, I was had the ability to maybe take this LT next to me or that pallet there without taking a hit. But now, I was not able to get as far across the map and I got hit much sooner, which means I pretty much was forced to running shack and nothing else in this chase as opposed to having many more options. Now that we've established that the amount of distance from the killer is directly related to the amount of time you have before you're hit, how can we increase the amount of distance and therefore the amount of time it takes for the killer to hit us? without running a straight line or taking an extra hit. The most basic way to get distance from the killer is using windows or pallets. So here at the start of this chase, you notice how when I vaulted that window, it put a huge wall between the two of us. But when I vault here, he was able to cut me off extremely easily. So there are right and wrong ways to vault these windows. When I vaulted the window the second time, he came from a side that I did not place a wall between the two of us, but he was able to easily walk around and cut me off. So when you vault your windows, you need to have distance in mind. When I vault from this angle where the killer is, it, will he be right here, able, easily able to cut me off from one side of the window to the other? Or will I be able to come from this side and where he has to run all the way around the wall from one side or the other? The same rules apply to using a pallet. So when you drop a pallet, the killer usually is standing still either because you stun them or because they kick the pallet. And this, when they stand still to do this, you're able to run away and that gives you more distance away from the killer, which increases your time before getting hit. You use this principle to, to get yourself to yet another pallet or window to continuously repeat the process of putting something between you and the killer. And that is a simple basic idea of what you're trying to do when looping. Now that I've discussed the basics of using windows and pallets and what distance means to a survivor, I want to emphasize how important pathing is. In the last video we discussed camera control, and camera control and pathing both go hand in hand. So if you are not able to look back, or you do not have experience looking back, you really need to watch my last video or simply just go and practice the drills the way I explained in that video. Otherwise you will not be able to appropriately incorporate these strategies and the knowledge I've given you into your chase because you will not have the information needed to make the right decisions on taking the right window and right pallet and giving yourself that distance that you so desperately need when extending a chase. But let's quickly define what pathing is. Pathing in Dead by Daylight is just referring to the route or path you take from one desired place to the other. So the most common ways people will properly take their paths is by hugging walls really closely when they're trying to wrap around corners or taking straight lines through the open from one window to the next. So right here in this chase, I'm going to show you what survivors normally do as a mistake. So here you can watch how my character is kind of pacing side to side. There are some people that will fidget their character like that in chase. If you're someone who notices that you do that, you need to stop because you are going to lose so much distance with that. I got hit through the window partially because his connection is a little rough, but also because I lost so much distance just doing that little nervous fidget that some people do by making their character go side to side like that. That's most common on keyboard and mouse players. Uh, and in this next ch chase, I'm going to show you a couple more examples of what improper pathing would be. So distance again needs to be kept in mind with pathing. So here we're starting with more distance away from the window and walls, so it takes us longer to get to the path towards this window. And we also turned our corners wide. And so you see how far away I get from this wall when the killer picks his route and I react? Even though I reacted on time, he starts getting extra close to hitting me. And these can result in hits. So here I path properly. And I turn wide here. Notice how long it's taking me to get to this window. And he gets his free hit there. Turning wide around these corners makes it to you take 
more time to get to the window and it takes longer distance to get there. And if you give the killer more time to catch up to you, you're going to get hit sooner. So it is important in your chases to hug closely as you're about to see me through here. Notice how I'm able to get to this window quickly. As I hug the wall, I'm hugging perfectly close and I even have a little bit extra time to react. And look how much it just keeps resetting the chase over and over. And here I go a little wide and I get hit. Most places with pallets usually have props that are more round or curvature. And so here you can see that I have to hug really tightly to the wall basically the entire time. The only time I'm not hugging the wall of these rocks is when there's this gap between the two of them. So you'll notice here when I go from one rock to the other, a straight line. But if I turn wide around this corner without hugging it, how he catches up to me before the pallet and gets his free hit. So the only reason I got hit in that second loop was because I wasn't hugging the wall. Let's look at an example of a pallet loop where the props are not just perfectly round the whole way through. In this loop, there are multiple situations where there's straightest path or the fastest path around these props is more of a straight line. Therefore, you only see me hug close to a prop when it's the fastest route. So as I go between the pallet and this square hay right here, I take a straight line because it's the fastest route to get to the other side of the pallet. Now in this part of the chase, we'll start in the exact same place. And you notice how if I take these corners wide and I don't get on these straight paths, and I'm not hugging the wall when I should be, he's able to catch up to me. In the same amount of laps we took, he was able to get to me way faster, and that was the difference between me getting hit before the pallet and me being able to throw the pallet down safely. All right, and for the last part of this video, I'm gonna let you analyze the differences in the chase with my pathing being perfectly straight and my camera placement being really good. So in this part of the chase, I am using kind of an advanced technique that I like to call transferring, which is when you incorporate multiple tiles in your chase and you transfer between one and the other. And this takes a good understanding of distance uh, and pathing in order to be able to properly incorporate multiple parts of loops to your advantage. So here, just notice how my camera is giving me tons of information to make it to where the killer cannot surprise me. And it lets me decide certain routes to take without getting in much danger. All right, now here's a more extensive chase. Once again, I'm gonna comment over this, but I want you to really focus on my camera positioning and my pathing and what I do to get distance from the killer and what decisions I make with that distance. So when I have short distance from the killer, I decide I need to take this window, right? Before he can get the hit, unless he's from another planet. So that hit got me kind of strange, but I took that hit. And another thing about distance is when you take a hit, you can use that extra distance to get kind of far away from the killer. And generally in chase, if you kind of maximize the value of your distance when you get hit just kind of by running straight away, a lot of people call this W keying, it's a way to, without risk, extend your chases instead of keeping the killer in like the same loop over and over and kind of losing mind games and getting found faster and hit sooner because you're not moving. But notice how I kind of went back and forth around the map and I'm just incorporating these windows as much as possible. This is another advanced thing uh, you like to do just it's just simply preserving pallets, trying my best not to use pallets and prioritize windows as much as possible until the killer has a lot of bloodlust. Because one thing that gets rid of bloodlust is the dropping a pallet and the killer kicking it. So here the killer vaults the window and that actually gives me a bit more distance. So I, instead of locking myself and vaulting this window here, I walked around it, right? And right after that, I ended up deciding to take the window early because I was afraid of his ping. Because I locked myself in the animation and he read my vault, he was able to get the down on me. All right, thank you so much for watching. This is the end of the distance and pathing video. I really appreciate you watching. Hope you learned a lot if you're new to the game. And if you're, if you've been playing for a while, hopefully something stuck out to you, maybe little bitty differences in your pathing uh, kind of stuck out. Really watch out for those things. I always encourage people to watch over full games, people's gameplay, and trying to analyze their camera positioning, distance management, and the paths they take when you're watching players that you're sure are better than you, such like ARN and JRM and all them. Uh, but yeah, y'all have a good one. I coach on Fiverr if you ever want some private one-on-one -on -one coaching for you. And uh, I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.